In this tutorial, we're going to use Agisoft PhotoScan to help us stitch all our images together. So really quickly, I just went to the website so you can take a look at it. Um, again, they got tons of information here about the software, how to use it, tutorials. Also, they offering a 30-day trial so you can download it and try it out. Uh, if you go to the features tab, you can see there's the professional edition, which can do quite a bit of stuff. And then the the standard edition, which can do pretty much what we're going to be doing, which is basically making a 3D model. Or it can even do panorama stitching if you want it. Um, again, you can go to downloads or you can buy it. It's up to you on what you want to do. The pricing can be pretty expensive so you know almost 3500 for the professional and then 180 for the standard uh, I think if you go for the education it's uh, about I think half the price if you go for education so there it is uh, check it out and uh, let's get into it so what I've done is I've loaded a model in that I've already done with the images that we went and processed from raw therapy and I've made two separate chunks inside of the program and what a chunk is is basically a a chunk of photos that I combined together or aligned to make just one piece of the model the top part of the model if I go underneath here you can see it's all hollowed out because if you look at the images I was only able to shoot right right here only the top part and then in the second chunk I'll double click it and if it's gonna load there it goes it takes a little bit of it to load and if I zoom back out you can see here's the bottom part so all the photos that made the bottom and I aligned all of those together and then the next part is to combine these two the chunk, the first chunk and the second chunk together to make one complete object. And sometimes, uh, just depending on how your camera set up or how you're shooting it, this is a necessary evil to do to get a object in complete 360. So I'm going to show you how to do that inside of Agisoft. So let's start with a new project. We're going to go to File, New, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first chunk. Uh, before I start with that, if you're wondering how to get the black uh, interface, which is a new addition to Agisoft, you can go to Tools, Preferences, and then General under Theme and switch this to Dark. Now you probably have to restart the program for it to actually kick in. So just a little bit of advice there. The other thing you want to do is also make sure you go to GPU and make sure that you have a good graphics card. Uh, again, the better graphics cards you can you have, the faster this is going to process on your machine. Make sure it's clicked on and also use CPU when performing GPU operations. This is just a little bit extra processing that will help you uh, align the photos so make sure both of these are clicked on which should happen by default and then let's hit OK and then we're gonna make the first chunk to come in here so we're gonna do uh, combine the, the uh, top part of the uh, boss box together first um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into this workspace right here and we're gonna right click and we're gonna say add chunk and then right now it says chunk one zero cameras that's fine click on the chunk right click and say add photos to that chunk and that's another assignment there we go let's go to JPEG so again under your file structure you should have the raw and then you should have JPEGs click in there uh, let's do the top so it's a little bit towards the bottom so I'm gonna start with this photo right here hold shift and select all the remaining ones and say open and it'll load it down here at the bottom where all your photos are that's fine 
so it takes a little bit of time for it to come in and then so that's going to be the top part of the object I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add chunk this is going to be chunk 2 and I'm going to say add photos and then I'll select the remaining ones so I'm going to go all the way and find all the bottom parts of that box and say open and load those in <clears throat> so I have about about 192 photos roughly so now let's go back to chunk one and we're going to align all the photos for the top so Agisoft is pretty easy to use um, again you can see this is the perspective view and then right up in here are all mo the most common tools you'll be using inside of Agisoft and we'll get into these as we go along so the only thing you need to know is to get things started is go to workflow and the workflow is pretty easy because this almost is step by step the process you need to do to create your object you need to align the photos create the dense cloud make the mesh and make the texture and then you export that out so that's what we're gonna do let's do align photos and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do several passes of the align what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a mask and these masks are gonna be able to help us merge these two chunks together so that's what we're gonna do we're not gonna actually make our final product yet we're actually gonna make masks from the model that we create which is really low settings that's gonna help us speed up the process when we want to combine the two halves together so right now we want to go to accuracy and go to low and then under advanced we want to make sure our key point limit is set to zero and tie point limit is set to zero and again these are uh, not default you have to put it in and basically this means there's no limitations on how many points it generates so if you set this to zero it means unlimited and infinite and again this just gives us a little bit more breather, breathing room to get more accuracy so I'm just gonna say okay and again a lot of the things you're gonna see with Agisoft takes some time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause it and once it's done uh, we'll move on to the next step we are back now you can see what it's done it's gone in there and it's generated an alignment so these are just points in space with some color showing you know where all the photos we're able to line up and come up with something of an environment. Now it's also capturing some of the grass that was outside, mostly just the grass. So this is a lot, this out here is a lot of useless information. We're not going to need it. If you actually want to see all the images or all the camera shots, you just come up here to the top and say show cameras and you can see these are all the camera shots that were used to make it so from every angle we were able to see a different part of the box to come up with our final result so that's what we want to do so that's the align process and that is basically the point cloud so if you hover back up in here we've just generated a simple point cloud from that alignment. I'm gonna hide those cameras because they get a little distracting. And what we wanna do is we want to come in here and make sure that we don't wanna generate the rest of this environment. We only wanna concentrate on the box itself. So we what we wanna do is um, see this little box around it. This is kind of a bounding box or a region box. We need to resize this to fit in the object that we want to concentrate on. So if we come up to the top here, there is resize region right here. So if we click on it, looks like a bunch of arrows going up and at, up and down and left to the right. We get a box. The box actually gets these little blue 
corners or balls in the corner that allows us to readjust it. So I'm just going to click on it and we're just going to bring those in just like that. And then the navigate around, you just click outside anywhere in the viewport, left mouse click, and you can navigate around. You don't have to press Alt or anything like that to move. Sometimes it gets a little wonky. I'm telling you right now, it takes a while to get used to Agisoft. It's really squirrely in its uh, 3D navigation. So again, you don't have to press Alt, just left mouse click and navigate. If you want to pan around, middle mouse click, hold and drag. And then right click is the same as uh, panning. And if you want to zoom in, just scroll on the wheel mouse to zoom in back and forth. So that's the basic navigation here for Agisoft. And so I'm going to get over here to the side and I'm just going to bring this in here and bring this in here. Again, always thinking about encompassing the box. Let's bring this down and then I'm going to Little mouse click and drag to bring and grab the little blue corner and bring it up. So right in here is where I want it. All right, perfect. If I want, I can even rotate the box to get it lined up so this one right here, there's rotate region. I can click on it and just slightly, you can barely see the box. If I move it, I can move, rotate it. And then if you want to get back to normal, normal navigation or anything like that, hit the space bar and you can rotate around. and then hit the space bar again and then you can get back to the rotating region so even even with the navigation if you wanted to move and rescale your box and you want to go back to the navigation hit the space bar and that moves you back into the navigation and then hit the space bar to manipulate the region again but I'm going to select the rotate and make sure this is somewhat hit that space bar and make sure it's somewhat close I think that's good enough that's really close alright once you've got that all lined up uh, you go to the next step and I'll show you that in the next video